In the early morning of August the 3rd, 2022, disaster struck in a closed down fun fair after a group of teenagers snuck onto the grounds and let themselves on the unsupervised rides. After a few hours, Mackenzie Crockford Cook decided to climb on top of the ride known as the Body Count, which resulted in deadly consequences. What would follow would shake the community of Kent and change his friends and family's lives forever. So what did happen that day? Let's talk about it. This is the infamous body count disaster, the death of Mackenzie Crockford Cook. At the time of the incident, Mackenzie was 14 years old and living in Deal, Kent, which is a coastal town found in the southeast of England. He moved to Deal at the age of six and was attending Goodwin Academy. According to articles, Mackenzie was a very good student who excelled in maths and science. His grandmother said he was always happy to help others. It was something he took pride in. He was further described as thoughtful, loving, beautiful, and special. His friend did say he was a bit of a prankster, kind, but also someone who enjoyed entertaining his friends and would often do out there things to make his friends laugh. He said he was a joker and somebody who was spontaneous and did things for a thrill and to get laughs from others. Half an hour from Deal, a fun fair was being held in Penkester Gardens, operated by Forest Amusements. Forest Amusements are the largest supplier of fun fair attractions in Kent and the surrounding areas. The company dates back to 1889 and supplies rides for carnivals and local events during the summer seasons. One of these events was the Penkester Gardens Fair, which had grown quite popular over the years. One of the rides supplied to the fair that year was the Body Count Ride, which was one of Forest Amusements' most popular attractions. The Body Count was what is known as a Superstar Ride, a fairground attraction manufactured by Northern Amusements. This ride features a single boom arm that rotates, lifting a spinning frame with eight main arms and a gondola seating up to four people. People are spun around in the air at high speeds, and it has become a fan favourite at fun fairs all over the world. That day was August the 3rd, 2022, and on that day, Mackenzie had agreed to meet his friend at the park in the middle of the night. He snuck out of his grandmother's house and arrived at Victoria Park at approximately three o'clock in the morning. He and his friend were then captured on CCTV at 4.48 in the morning, where they caught a train to Dover. Here, they met some friends who lived in the area and had been on a sleepover. The group made their way to Penkester Gardens with the intention of breaking in and playing on the rides before it opened. They intended to leave early morning so no one would find out they were there. Once they arrived at the closed fair, the group played on the dodgems and trampolines. They had now been there for a few hours and it was getting to the point where they had to leave before anyone caught them, but before they did, they wanted to go on one ride before they left. This, of course, was the body count. The plan was to climb onto the ride, but first they had to push it to get it going. Mackenzie pushed the arm holding the seats and it began to spin. He then proceeded to climb on top. Whilst Mackenzie was climbing up the arm to get on top of car 6, he slipped. The car, still spinning, trapped in between the arm of the ride and a hydraulic support beam. He was now jammed in, suspended six feet in the air and unable to move. He let out a horrific scream and his friends began to push the arm in the opposite direction, but it was too heavy and they were unable to do so. At this point, the teenagers who were now panicking rang emergency services. Whilst waiting for them to arrive, his friend told him he loved him and kissed him on the forehead. He had now turned purple. The commotion had woken up Luke Shufflebottom, the operator of the ride, who was asleep in his caravan next to the site. He ran to the scene, but there was nothing he could do. He knew Mackenzie was dead and told the group that they would have to wait for detectives to arrive until he was moved. The emergency responders arrived on the scene less than 15 minutes later, but it was too late. As Luke already knew, Mackenzie had died moments after getting trapped. The park was then shut off to the public whilst an investigation into the incident was launched. Later that day, Forest Amusements released a statement saying, We are deeply shocked and saddened to hear about the tragic incident which occurred this morning at one of our funfair events in Penkester Gardens, Dover. The health and safety executive has attended the scene along with the emergency services. Maria Forrest, who was in charge of the fair, said they abide by every law. When the park is open, there are three guards, but when it's closed, Security isn't needed. This is the same with every fun fair across the UK. 
This was also backed up by Dover District Council. She said, There is no security once the funfair is closed, as this is not required by the council. According to Luke Shufflebottom, the ride operator, the ride was fully working and was able to move without power for health and safety reasons, which is why they were able to move it. He said, This incident, among anyone I have spoken to, is the first of its kind. He also said that they never fenced off the ride and that there are no requirements to do so, stating, Some fares fence it completely and they don't allow access, but this is not something we have to do. The investigators interviewed each of Mackenzie's friends. On that day, they scaled the fence around the park to enter. According to them, they were begging Mackenzie to come down off the ride, but he continued to climb up and lost his footing at the top. Foul play was quickly ruled out, and at the inquest, the South East Coast Ambulance Service said the patient was with friends playing with a closed fairground ride. When they were climbing it, it spun in a way that trapped the patient, which resulted in his chest being crushed by the ride. On arrival, we were met by a group of young teenage girls who directed us to a ride where their friend was said to be trapped between the ride and the arm of the ride. He was on his back and crushed from the chest down. The coroner ruled the case as misadventure and the post-mortem examination put Mackenzie's death down to a traumatic rupture of the liver and spleen as a result from being crushed. It was also stated he had smoked cannabis before the incident, but it was not deemed to have played a role in his death. The coroner James Dillon said, because Mackenzie had chosen to climb the ride, he was undertaking a risky activity and it had the tragic consequence that it did. Rightfully so, no one was blamed for Mackenzie's death, but in the aftermath, the Strategic Director of Operations for Dover Council, Roger Walton, claimed he would try and make changes to their regulations. He said, The question is whether there should be security out of hours as well, to safeguard the equipment and to safeguard those who might inadvertently gain access to it. Once the news broke, hundreds of tributes were paid for Mackenzie, his heartbroken mother saying, My beautiful baby, I'm going to miss you forever. Best friends for life, my little banter buddy. No words can explain my pain. Until we meet again, I love you so much. Another family member said, To know I will never see your cheeky smile again breaks my heart. I'll look after your mum, dude, just like you always did. A makeshift memorial was placed, where hundreds of Mackenzie's friends left messages. They left balloons, flowers, and photographs. A spokesperson for the park said, Our thoughts and sympathy are with the boy's family at this terrible time. As a family run funfair, this incident has affected us all. We would like to thank the emergency services that attended that day, who did everything they possibly could, and we are very grateful to each and every one of them. May he rest in peace. As always, this is not an AI channel, I do everything myself, and if you appreciate my work, subscribe, and if you want to go the extra step to support the channel, maybe consider becoming a member. This case is tragic, and although what Mackenzie did was foolish, nobody deserves this outcome. I hope his friends who witnessed the incident are okay, and my best wishes go out to his family. Let me know your thoughts about this case in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.